what we will do is we will look at uh, let me explain what we are trying to do now right just so that we get get the context straight we have we know that the error in the solution en plus 1 satisfies this is determined by this iteration equation is that fine now what we have is we are going to this error corresponds to a function e x y which is the error in the original solution okay. So remember that every time that you have a, a phi h there is a corresponding there is a corresponding phi right there is a corresponding I would say uh, uh, so see this this actually corresponds though they are set of points they actually it actually corresponds to a function. It is a function because we can use linear interpolants to find the value at any given point. Am I making sense? Okay. See, if you, if you, as I said before in an earlier class, you are supposed to be giving me a solution to Laplace's equation, and if I say that I have a square, and in this case we have actually gone from, we have taken an L by L square. For the sake of this discussion, we have gone to an L by L square. If you say that I have gone to an L by L, if I have, if you are saying that you give me a solution to Laplace's equation in this square, right? That means I have a right to pick any point and say what is the function value at that point. And you have to give me a value. You cannot say no, it is not one of my grid points, I cannot give you a value. That that is not an acceptable answer. Then you have not given me a solution. Anywhere in this L by L L by L square. If you say that you have solved Laplace's equation satisfying the boundary conditions that I have prescribed, then you must necessarily give me a value right at any given point. You understand what I am saying which is why we talked about the hat functions and all those ways by which given values at nodes you are actually able to give me intermediate points that was the objective okay that was that is the reason why that we, are, we know that there is an underlying function representative representation though I am giving you nodal values is that fine. So E x y corresponds to that. Now what we are asking the question that we are asking is if I go through this sequence e n plus 1 is p times e n if I keep repeating this I will generate a sequence which is e 0 which is our first the error that we make when we assume the solution then you have e 1, e 2, e 3 uh, these are not e as in 2.71 this is e as in the error right. So you e 4 and so on so the question that we have is does the sequence converge. What we are proposing to do now in today's class what we are proposing to do is we are going to expand this using Fourier series we are going to expand this using Fourier series okay. The original equation this is a linear equation this is a linear equation Fourier series is a linear combination of sines and cosines okay right. So if I were to substitute the Fourier series any any mode any any single mode of the Fourier series if I ask the question what does this equation do to any single mode of the Fourier series right. If I pick a general mode and ask the question what does this do to the amplitude of that mode this first wave number or the second wave number or the third wave number right I can address that question individually because the equation is linear is that fine okay because this this this, this cropped up. So Essentially what I am going to do is I am going to write E of x comma y as a Fourier but it is in two dimensions the Fourier series in two dimensions and uh, I know I know that the boundary conditions are 0 because this is the error this is the error so the value of the error on the boundaries is 0 because the boundary conditions are applied exactly so it is non zero only on the interior okay. So if you do Fourier series normally you have to do something called periodic extension and all that because you, your initial mode if you think about it just in one dimension if this is this is x that is y just in one dimension your initial mode sin x will be something like this okay the initial mode sin x will be something like this it is 0 here it is 0 there your, your error can contain your error can contain for example your error could be this could just be this okay your error could just be this. So you have to be able to represent this so this goes from 0 to L 
what we normally do is we extend it to minus L and there is a there is a function on that side that we are not going to worry about because I do not care it is not in my problem domain. So as a consequence this E of xy I am just saying this so that you can go back and look up your Fourier series right and figure out where it is okay as a consequence I can write E of x comma y as a double summation because it is in two dimensions A L B M exponent I pi L X by capital L and exponent I pi M Y by capital L is that fine everyone and the summation right now this summation I will just write M L and M the summation if you go look at look up your Fourier series the summation actually goes from a minus N to plus N or something of that sort okay I will just write L and M you go check this out okay because there are there are there are grid points that go because I have, I have extended it to minus L there are grid points that go there are grid points that go the other side if I have started numbering this at 1 this would be minus 1 minus 2 and so on but we will not go and get into that I do not want to get into that okay so I just leave it as M and L okay fine now where do I want to at what points but I do not though this is a continuous function I plan to substitute it into that equation the iteration equation right which is a discrete equation and that is going to be evaluated at my grid points which are xp q and ypq. So because because it is a uniform grid I do not need the q here nor do I need the p here. So xp is p times h, h is the grid size and yq is q times h. right so this turns out to be e x p so I will write e of x p y q I write that as e p q turns out to be a summation over L summation over M A L B M exponent I pi x by L x is p h by L and I pi m there is an L here q h by m q h by L fine. Now we have already seen so E p plus 1 q what is the relationship to between E p plus 1 q and E p q. So the, the difference will only be a e power e power i pi h right you can work that out so e p plus 1 so it will be turned out to be an e power i pi h by L times let me write exponent I do not want to write e power because I am already using e for exponent i pi h by L into E p q is that fine right now because they are equal intervals h by L is known L L L L h L h L h yes I have to so I have to have the summation okay I do not want to do this I am doing this a bit early okay I, I, I let me let me let me do this uh, I have to I have to take component by component first okay now this this e I want to substitute into e n plus 1 equals p times e n okay because this equation is linear this is linear I can swap out the sums and 
I can swap out the double summation and so on and component by component I can actually extract out the A's and L's component by component by appropriately dot, dotting it with the appropriate E power appropriate sine and cosine right they are all orthogonal to each other and so on. So in fact it is enough if I just look at if it is enough if I, I can take any one wave number and ask the question what is the effect that this iteration equation has on that wave number okay I have an orthogonal set essentially. I can ask what happens to any one of them is that fine okay. So the objective of course is we want to find out which wave number is growing the growing the is decaying the slowest we want to find out which of these wave numbers is decaying the slowest. So I can pick an L and an M so for an arbitrary L and M so I pick pick L and M arbitrarily and I ask what happens to that component. So if all the others were 0 right and that the error was in that form there are different ways by which we can argue this if all the other coefficients is coefficients were 0 and on the only the L and M components were left how would that L, L comma M component grow okay that is another way to that is another way that we can look at it okay what how would the L comma M if I had only this how would this component grow is that fine. There are different ways that you can look at this so that is one possibility that you can ask the question what is the how would that L comma M component grow. So I should in theory also add a subscript right I should in theory uh, uh, also add right so in EXY I should also add a subscript saying that I am going to do the L comma M component but just so that I do not make it too complicated. I will just leave the we know that we are dealing only with the I have picked an L comma M component okay. So what does that do how to let let us substitute it into our equation and see what that does. So EPQ at N plus 1 is 0.25 times EP plus 1 Q at N plus E p minus 1 q at n plus 1 leave this at n plus E p q plus 1 at n plus E p q minus 1 at n is that fine. So for the L comma M component for L comma M component what do I have E P plus 1 Q in fact is exponent I pi L uh, P plus 1 H by L which equals exponent I pi L P L H by L into E power is that fine okay. So we get these expressions E p plus 1 q equals this exponent i pi L h by capital L is n and E e p q E p minus 1 q equals exponent minus i pi L by n E p minus 1 q and similarly you get the other ones with m and right plus m and minus m the wave numbers will change. So E p plus 1 q going back to our iteration equation E p q n plus 1 is 
0.25 times is that fine E p q at n multiplying exponent i pi l by n plus exponent minus i pi l by n plus exponent i pi m by n plus exponent i pi minus i pi m by n is that okay is that fine pardon me there has to be no h by l is I have replaced h by l by n here okay h by l is 1 by n is that fine h by l is 1 over n now we will use the fact that e power i theta exponent of like I should not write I should be very careful how I write this exponent of i theta since I have called my error e I pay the price for that right so exponent of i theta is cos theta plus i sin theta substitute back here and you will get e p q n plus 1 remember this is for wave numbers l comma m this is for wave numbers l comma we are just asking the question what happens to the wave numbers l comma m okay equals e p q n by 4 of course into 2 cos i pi l by capital L plus 2 cos i pi m by capital L pardon me no i no i and that should be an n thank you this is what got me in trouble earlier okay right so the gain going from one iteration to another iteration the gain is the basically the ratio of these amplitudes okay so it is epq at n plus 1 divided by epq which is g this happens to be real so we do not have to worry about right normally if, if g if g were complex then we would have to do g g bar or something of that sort it happens to be real so we want only the gain and we want we want the modulus right the absolute value and this is mod of 2 cos pi l by n plus 2 cos pi m by n divided by 4 is that okay everybody is with me now we ask the questions what is the value right what is when is this maximum I want the maximum value I want the maximum possible value now it turns out the error error is not going to see the, the error is 0 at the boundaries we do not have a the electrical engineers would say we do not have a DC component right so we do not have we do not the summation need not start at 0 a0 we do not have an a0 we do not have an a0 or a b0 right there no so the summation starts the, the wave numbers that we get correspond to the wave numbers that we get the largest wave numbers the wave numbers that we get go from 1 basically through n minus 1 that are of interest to us okay so 0 as I said the DC component is not there the function is the error is 0 on all the boundaries so fortunately for us the expression that we have g as mod 2 cos pi l by n plus 2 cos pi m I just repeat it here by n 
fortunately the expression that we have mod divided by 4 we ask the question uh, when does this become maximum right when does when does it take its maximum value and that occurs fortunately for us it occurs when at the two extremes 1 and n minus 1 we do not really have to hunt anywhere in between am I making sense because if you go to 0 if it if it 0 is possible then the cost would be 1 if you went to pi cost would be minus 1 right which are the extreme values that it can take we have a modulus so the sign does not matter so I substitute 1 and this gives me the max over L and M okay so you see the game that we played we have used the fact that the equation is linear we have considered an arbitrary wave number L and M we have got the gain that we can get for that L and M and now we are asking the question for which L and M is it is it maximum is that gain maximum okay that is the key. So the max over L and M gives me G max which is 4 cos pi by N divided by 4 which is cos pi by N. Is that fine? Okay. Which of course I can expand using Maclaurin series. So Maclaurin series would give me, and I'll just use the first two terms. Maclaurin series. This will give me approximately one minus pi by n squared, one half. Other terms I'll ignore those. Pi by n squared. Okay. So this is this is our this is our largest largest eigenvalue. This is basically the spectral radius. Do you understand? When I, I I put it through I put it through the I put it through the crunch once I, I iterate it once, right? If I go from an n iterate to an n plus first iterate, n was chosen arbitrarily from an n iterate to an n plus first iterate, the gain that I get is of this order. This is the largest gain, corresponds to the largest eigenvalue, right? It corresponds to the largest eigenvalue. And what is this value? So, if you take, say, for example, n is 100, what are you going to get? We can just estimate it. If you take n as 100, pi squared is like 10. We will do an engineering approximation. Pi squared is like 10, right? So, n is uh, right. This is so the denominator gives me 2001 minus, it is of the order of. 1 minus 1 over 2000 that is like 0 0.999 is there one more 9 enough <laughs> Five, something of that sort do you understand what I am saying okay. So for the first mode if you have an error I am, I am drawing it only in one dimension now we will forget the other if you have an error if you have an error if your initial guess is such that the error is like that that is the first mode that is going to decay this amplitude is going to decay at this rate every iteration that you do that amplitude will be multiplied by this number it is going to take forever to converge am I making sense okay right. So as I said we will, we will do I will in the next class I will do a demo and you will actually see that uh, you will actually see what you know how bad it can be fine. Are there any questions? Yes, please. Because uh, exponential is uh, orthogonal to each other. Exponentials are, orthogonal. exponentials are orthogonal to each other, and the equation is linear. Right? It's like the equivalent of saying that sigma f equals zero. When you do statics or dynamics, you say sigma f equals zero. Then you can say the x component of forces is 0, y component of forces is 0, z component of 4 there you are using orthogonality okay but you also need that the equation into which I am substituting see sigma f equals 0 fortunately happens to be a linear equation right. So i j k are orthogonal so you can do it component wise but the equation that you are that you are going to decompose has to be linear if the equation is not linear then you run into difficulty right because uh, you can get coupling terms and all of that kind of stuff is that fine does that make sense. 
you have to be a bit careful because the, the IJK argument you have to be a bit careful right that, 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 that analogy only goes so far right be a bit careful okay. So if the equation were non-linear then you would get see if the, the, if the equation were non-linear in this case right if you had a u du dx term right which we are all familiar with from our fluid mechanics if you had a u du dx term right if you substituted Fourier series into it let us not for, let us forget exponentials let us just stick with uh, sines and cosines. If the u you are looking at the sin x term du dx would give you a cos x term right and suddenly u du dx gave you a sin 2 x term you understand because this is a cos x sin x cos x okay. So the, the u du dx term contributes to the sin 2 x component so you cannot when you say I am going to decompose it you have to be a bit careful okay if you are going to decompose it component wise you have to be a bit careful you understand right. So we it is important that the equation the iteration equation is linear that is very important fine okay. So yeah so we you can see that if you get if you try to get any sensible if you try to get any so n even n equals 10 even n equals 10 right I mean is going to give you like 1 minus 1 over 20 even for even for n equals 10 you are going to end up even for n equals 10 g max is going to be like 1 minus 1 over 20. Am I making sense? So the convergence rate, I mean, it is it is quite so. You may be happy with how how fast it runs with for n equals ten, but the minute you want to say if you want to try something larger, now you are talking about let me try at n equals thousand. Then it gets really bad, right? If you if if for whatever reason you want to use higher higher resolution, then it gets really bad. Okay. There are no other questions. The other thing that we looked at. was writing a using the fact that a transpose equals a so we use use the fact that a is symmetric you remember when I say a what I am talking about a is symmetric symmetric a right that is this equation could be transformed to or I will write could be transformed to a discrete version which was a phi equals b okay this is what I meant. So this could be transformed into to stick to our consistent notation this could be transformed into this and I basically said that for consistency I mean not for consistency but to make it look like a tra traditional standard problem that you are used to if you just write it at a as a x equals a x tilde equals b then corresponding to this we can come up with a, a function q which is a function of x tilde which is one half x tilde transpose a x tilde minus x tilde transpose b or b tilde. I am sticking the b tildes underneath just to indicate that they are vectors and I made it a b tilde because I have called it x tilde that is that is only that is the only reason why we are doing what we are doing just so that the equation is consistent and we already saw that the gradient of q x tilde gives us because a is symmetric this gives us a x tilde minus b equals 0 for extrema okay I think I had a sign error there earlier. So the one dimensional equivalent of this a one dimensional analog if I just consider one coordinate so I can have a q of x this is just x equals one half a x squared minus b x so this normally when we do flow past uh, anything flow past a cylinder or something of that sort 
right I just set up the boundary conditions and then we will talk about it later. So and we have Laplace's equation for so we say the flow is rotational so I will not go through the fluid mechanics of all of this right. So what is the if this is a solid cylinder and there is a fluid flow past the cylinder there is a flow past the cylinder okay. So what is the boundary condition that you have on the cylinder you have the no penetration boundary it is called the no penetration boundary condition or the solid wall condition right which is the normal velocity is 0 the normal component of the velocity is 0. So there is no normal component of the velocity there is only a tangential component okay that is grad phi dotted with n equals 0 right and from our understanding of directional derivatives which we will need in a little while now this tells us that dou phi dou n equals 0. We are not going to do flow pass cylinder here this is just for motivation we are not going to we are not planning to do flow pass cylinder okay. So we will stick ourselves we will, uh, we will restrict ourselves to a box but the fact of the matter is that anywhere on the box it is possible that you are given dou phi dou n is 0 or dou phi dou n equals something. Okay, if you have a if you have a if this is a room if this represents a room and there is some air coming in through a air conditioner or whatever it is then dou phi dou n may be may give you some velocity at that point which is the speed at which the air conditioner is injecting air into. So you may be given the dou phi dou n value what we have done so far is we have prescribed the phi values on the boundary but the question is what happens if you are not given phi but you are given dou phi dou n okay fine. Well, are we given these on all the boundaries are we given it only on one boundary okay you would have studied this in PDE I am pretty sure in partial differential equations course you have seen Dirichlet problems no Neumann problems and Robin problems. So Dirichlet problems you are given the function value on the boundary Neumann problem you are given derivatives on the boundary and Robin problem is a mixed problem you are given combinations of derivatives and the function value okay. So we have to basically see how we have to ha how we will handle the problems that have derivative conditions given on the boundary right right. So that is a very small segment that we will do that in the next class and we will also do a few demos okay thank you.